Hey guys, Kate420 back at you with a video. Quick and short, because I have put a lot of time into this new Kanika update thing that I'm doing. So I'm slacking off a little bit on my videos. And I didn't realize that. You know, there were so much new infer I wouldn't say new, new opinions and new things to look over since I left the case. So bear with me. It's in the process. In the meantime, here in the great state of New York, we have proof that there is a two-tier justice system once Again, if we don't already see what's going on today in this country with this BS Biden situation in the president, because Biden is just basically what they've accused Trump of doing with, with no facts and evidence. They have proof of Biden doing with facts and evidence in his own mouth. And they were so divided that, you know, um, stuff that us regular people would do they would have no problem throwing us in jail for but you know, anybody that works for a government or law enforcement or any any position of power any position of power can just basically commit crime willy-nilly and have no worries whatsoever this situation is a really sad situation because i imagine that there's been plenty of girls in this situation especially if they're alone and being arrested. This was the 18-year-old, uh, hang on, let me do Anna, I believe. I want to make sure, yep, Anna Chambers. Okay. The woman who goes by Anna Chambers on social media had just a few short words for the public on Thursday evening. Fuck the criminal justice system, she tweeted. <clears throat> Earlier that day, through a call from her lawyer, Chambers learned that the two former New York Police Department officers who had raped her while on duty would serve no time in jail. Eddie Martins and Richard Hall, the cops who resigned after the incident involving the, eight, the then 18-year-old Chambers, were sentenced to five years of probation after they pleaded to guilty to 11 charges, including bribery mis and misconduct. Both men admitted to having sex with the teenage girl while she was held in their custody in 2017, an act that, thanks to Chambers' case, now constitutes rape under the law and always constituted rape under any moral reading of the word. Right. If you're if you're in custody, I know this from you know prison days. If you're in custody, you can be have sex consensually, and it is rape with with an officer because you don't have the right to consent at that point. You are the state's property. Listen, the pleas and the light sentences handed down in a secretive court hearing come at the same moment that NYPD officers and their belligerent union are protesting the long overdue firing of Daniel Pantaleo, the cop who choked Eric Garner to death. Together with the closure of the criminal case surrounding Chambers' ordeal, it could not be more clear the extent to which police impunity continues to reign. Don't get me wrong, guys. I am not a person that is uh, bashing what these people chose to do for a living. I, as a matter of fact, did a video um, covering the suicides in the NYPD this year and how there's a some type of systemic thing going on there. However, she says, or excuse me, it's completely outrageous. Chambers attorney Michael David told me on the phone Thursday night. They admitted on record to having sex with her in a van, handcuffed. That doesn't say it here, but it will. No jail time. It's just outrageous. Anna is hysterical. Chambers' case should have been clear cut from the moment in September of 2017 that a hospital rape kit found semen matching Martin and Hall's DNA inside the teenager's body. The young woman had been detained, handcuffed, and taken into police officers' unmarked van, having been found in possession of a small amount of drugs.
Chambers performed oral sex on both officers and had vaginal sex with Martins. Then the cops left her on a corner. At the time, state law did not assert the most obvious of facts, that a person in police custody cannot consent to sex, which is so, okay, if I live in the state of the New York and that's the law in the state prison, why would this not be the law in New York City custody? I don't understand. Why, why is it that somebody thought to make it a law statewide, but didn't think about doing it for something as large as New York City Police Department? in the in the metro you know uh what is it one police plaza or whatever where they ha where they have the holding center like that that right there is the, if it's not a law there for the officers not to be sleeping with inmates if it's not considered rape then there's a problem all right um the young woman had been detained, handcuffed, and taken into the officer's unmarked van, performed oral sex, had a vaginal in, with Martins, and the cops left her on the corner. Oh, we read that one. Sorry. Um, it says, all rape charges against the officers were dropped in March as prosecutors questioned Chambers' credibility, an issue that should have no bearing in a case with such clear-cut facts. <sighs> I don't know. Well, anyway, um, it, it says the egregious legal loophole has since been closed, but it was too late to benefit Chambers or to stop Martins and Hall from getting away with rape. Chambers attorney told me that he and his client had not made aware, had been made aware in advance of Thursday's hearing, having expected the officer's next court date date to be September 9th. Indeed, Chambers tweeted 10 days ago, I'll be in court September 9th, exclamation mark. David, the attorney said, uh, quote, they did it secretly. It wasn't even on the court's calendar. Hmm. No favors there. It gets deeper, guys. This wasn't the only dirty stuff that was like, wait, uh, Kings County Supreme Court Justice Danny Chun handed down a sentence more lenient than even the prosecution recommended. So even the people who were prosecuting the case, they had um, offered, like, they give them, like, a minimum, maximum, like, this is what we want them to serve. The judge went below that. For record, Your Honor, we do not oppose, or we do not oppose a non-jail sentence, said the ADA Frank D. Gatano. Uh, the district attorney's office recommended one to three in jail for charges that could carry a seven-year sentence. The judge, oh, in response, he accounted for his leniency in an abrupt monologue peppered with victim blaming. The, listen to this. This is the judge. The credibility of the victim or the complainant, said Chun, was seriously questionable at best. Chun proceeded to refer to the victim only as the complainant. There are criminal activities here on both sides. He thereby laid culpability of her own rape at Chambers' feet for her role in the so-called bribery. That is her rape at the hands of armed, uniformed police officers. This was not Chun's first, first high-profile turn at enforcing NYPD impunity. In 2016, in a rare instance of criminal conviction for a killer cop, former officer Peter Liang was found guilty by a jury for manslaughter of an um, unarmed black man. A Kai Gurley... Liang had, oh, excuse me, Akai Gurley, that was the man. Liang had drawn his gun, finger on the trigger, while carrying out a vertical patrol in a darkened stairwell in Brooklyn, Brooklyn's pink houses. The cop heard a noise and fired. His bullet ricocheted off a wall and struck Gurley in the heart. Neither Liang or his partner carried out CPR. Chun C deemed a sentence of five years probation appropriate in that instance as well. You know, I don't know why don't we why we don't all want to be cops. We would get away with murder, rape, all these terrible things. You never have to worry about getting set up because you could get away with it because you have a badge. This is 
His first letter sent this year was not. Okay, Chambers' attorney told me he'd be writing again to the U.S. Attorney's Office to pursue federal civil rights violations against Hall and Martins. His first letter sent earlier this year was not answered, and he was pessimistic of the possibility. Um, with this president, they won't go after the police. When it comes to police sexual misconduct, there is no Me Too. Correction, August 30th, 2019, 107 p.m. Due to an editing error, an earlier version of the story said two officers had been involved uh, were fired. The story has been updated to reflect that they resigned. The story has been also updated to reflect that the charges they plead could carry a seven, not 11-year sentence. Okay, so hold on because it, this is where I wanted to show you. There was other dirt in this case. Uh, the one of the special prosecutors that was working on this case had an affair with one of the officers that had been charged. No joke. And it went on for God knows how long before somebody found out about it and you know demanded she resign. I'm not sure if she did. With less than a week to go before jury selection, it's expected to begin the rape trial of two ex NYPD officers, prosecutors with the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office, are asking that the case be turned over to a special prosecutor. We regret that. Our continuing to pursue this case might well create an appearance of impropriety. <laughs> this is before this uh, this all happened back in the spring and and winter. You guys, what I'm reading you right now happened before the the article I just read you. The article I just read you is the most recent, meaning that they were found guilty, but only of those bunk at well they actually they didn't even have to get found guilty they pled out they pled out to 11 charges that could carry up to seven years in jail all right so i want to get to this right here uh 20 year old woman who uses the name anna chambers on jail so this is too obviously two years into it okay we while we disagree with the rationale for the defendant's motion hang on I'm just looking for the part that says this is why we want to get we want a different prior turned over to a special prosecutor. Within two and a half pages, Hoppick emphasized three reasons they cannot move forward with a slew of charges against former anti-crime detectives Richard Hall and Eddie Martins. Here it is. The discovery of a romantic relationship Hall once had with the prosecutor at the DA's office <laughs> not involved with the case. False testimony given under oath and unethical use of chambers as a witness, meaning they forced her to go on the stand unethically. Chambers originally reported that on September 15th, she was falsely arrested for drug possession by Hall and Martins. And after the arrest, she said the two men took turns raping her in the backseat of their police van as they drove through Bay Ridge and Coney Island. Hall and Martins claimed the sex was consensual and each resigned after being indicted. Quickly, these are the two bums, Hall and Martins. And the teenager who claims she was raped while under arrest detailed to the Post Friday how cops barged into her hospital room and aggressively tried to coax her out of bringing assault charges against their colleagues. So their buddies went to the hospital where she was getting a rape kit done and basically threatened her not to go after these two. The victim revealed how the officers allegedly tried to intimidate her at Mayo Mines Medical Center in Brooklyn the night she was allegedly raped, one claiming that the accused sex criminals were not even cops. At least nine officers showed up to my ho to the hospital trying to intimidate me and my mom, it said a 19-year-old woman who goes by the name Anna Chambers. I was sitting in the room by myself. There were They were pressing me, saying things like, oh, this isn't the first time you had an encounter with the police. Chambers, who was 18, went to the hospital with her mom to get a rape kit done. During the hospital visit, she claims a number of officers from the 60th precinct tried to convince her to change her story. 
The, these are not police, she quoted the other officer as saying about the alleged rapist. Chambers said she was shocked at the police treatment and she choked back tears while describing her or ordeal. I was bawling my eyes out. She said they were the way they were speaking to me was so rude and aggressive. <clears throat> NYPD said Friday it had opened an investigation into the woman's claims about the hospital visit. The victim gave her account of the alleged bullying after a lawyer for one of the accused detectives argued that her story was inconsistent. <sighs> Martin's lawyer said she uh, Martin's lawyer Mark Badro said Chamber's story doesn't add up and that her lawyer has repeatedly contradicted her sworn claims. She was interviewed by, okay, not, nothing corroborates the sensational allegations made by a plaintiff's lawyer more than two months after the incident. She was interviewed by IAB the evening of the 16th. IAB sought a warrant for the handcuffs the following day. They came to me, Chambers said. My father was there too. I told them everything that happened. They did nothing. Badrow question why it took Chambers' lawyer until this week to come forward with the allegations of intimidation by officers. David responded that he had only learned about the incident 10 days ago while when Chambers' mother recounted the disturbing details to him. David reiterated his client's story was consistent and that the tactics by the defense were similar to those deployed by the cops in the hospital. The defense is making up the contradictions to follow or to, to further bully and intimidate this rape victim. Repeated, um, and it goes on to say he repeatedly contradicted himself. Basically, they have just re-victimized this child because mentally she's still a child from this. Uh, she was still growing when this happened. Um, you just re the, the system just re-victimized her all over again. And yet again, the one with the power walks. When's that going to end? <sighs>